October 23rd. Hello and welcome. Lynx here. We are playing How May I Direct Your Curse? I think we are approaching the end and today this game might come to an end for us. As per usual, link in the description as well. You might check out like other choices and what that would lead to. Maybe there would be something different. Let's see how things go for us here for... Come on, start flickering already. I know that. I know that's how she gets here. Actually, the flicking was just to divert your attention away from the desk. I can appear anywhere near the screen. Gwen. There you are. I was worried you wanted to come. I didn't know if I should. But the damage is already done. So I figured must well have the decency to show up and do whatever I could for you. But listen to me when I say I'm sorry. What? What are you apologizing for? I thought you were some femme fatale trying to seduce me. I called you a murderer and a spy. I'm a soul-sucking ghoul. I can't be offended by something like that. Well, you should be, and you're not a ghoul. How dare you say that? You're the kindest, most beautiful woman I've ever met. Huh? You... <laughs> How are you still so adorable? <laughs> <laughs> Look, come over here, I need to talk to you about something. I bet you don't expect what's about to happen. <laughs> Whatever you want, Jojo. What? Gwen. That's far enough. <clears throat> That's far enough, creature. Who are you? What is this? Agent 4. What's going on? Huh? Well, you said you only wanted to talk to her. You... Wait. Stop. Stop. Wrong. Agent 4, what is going on? You said you only wanted to talk to her. You don't walk up to a tiger if it's not in a cage. Oh, and I wouldn't try your little teleporting tricks, me soul sucker. That cage extends through realities, even to your pocket dimension, highly whole. How do you know about that? Annette, what's going on? I'm sorry. Uh, he uh, he said he could help us. And that's exactly what I'm going to do, Miss Turnbuckle. I'm going to save your life by putting his parasite out of its misery. You bastard! Annette, wait! Uh, is that true? Can you save her? I can. All I need to do is give the command and the cage will destroy everything inside or connected to it, including you and your curse. Then what are you waiting for? No, You can't do this! I won't let you! Annette, it's okay! What? How can you say that? <laughs> because the agent is right! I'm a parasite! And if my death can save you, then so be it! Stop talking like that! There has to be another way, don't you understand? He's going to kill you! And what kind of life do we have to look forward to if he doesn't? Love spent without you in a dark, cold hall, just waiting, used as a weapon again by an unfeeling curse. My only happy memories are with you, and if I'm left alive, I will kill you and I will go back to being nothing but pain and hatred and hurt more people. I can't let that happen. <clears throat> I'm losing voice, by the way, already. I can't have a life without you, but you can have one without me. What life? I spend every day directing calls and answering questions for a company that breeds misery for everyone who works for it. I'm too scared and tired to make friends or go out anywhere. I'm pathetic. Scared? I, I just don't feel like going out and making friends. <laughs> you're surviving and one day you're going to find a way to do more than that. You're a human. Even if it doesn't feel like it, you can make things better for yourself. <laughs> You are the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm a murderer ghost. This is such a low bar. Yeah, actually, it's a great bar, man. 
I mean, to be honest, better than... Better than dating a woman from Poland! <laughs> you would not expect a Polish guy to say that, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking by that, by that rule, absolutely. <clears throat> Barely any good girls here, good woman here. I love you enough, even if we didn't have very long together, I love you with all my heart. Shadows, I can even give you a goodbye kiss without killing you. <clears throat> I'll risk it. I won't. All right, get on with it. And he's like, God damn it. I can't do it now. Or I click. <laughs> well, I'm satisfied. What do you think, boss? I couldn't agree more. What? Did that cage just talk? What in the shadow? Ah, we sincerely apologize for the decep deception and distress. Meridiana. But we've been tricked before, and with terrible consequences. Whoa, what are you? What, what is going on? What? I'm Professor Meridiana de Arulac. For heaven's sake. Why does it sound French? That's even worse than Polish. Being from another dimension, and director of the Human Preservation Association. I know there is a lot to unpack there. Iggy, darling. <laughs> Iggy. Would you mind ordering some coffee and snacks from that wonderful branch a bistro nearby? Already on it. <clears throat> Human Preservation Association. Iggy. It's going to take a while to explain properly. October 23rd. 6.45. <sighs> okay, can someone hand me over a baseball bat? He just slurped. I absolutely hate slurping. He deserves to be hit with a baseball bat in the head. Why did she moan? <laughs> How much longer do you think they're going to be? Uh, <clears throat> well, they are traveling across the veil of reality into a mic micro, micro dimension made out of forces beyond human comprehension to dismantle a curse fueled by hatred and human lives. I give it another five minutes. How are you holding up? Oh, fine, fine, just fidgety. <clears throat> Sounds about right. Actually, can you explain the whole HPA thing one more time? I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. Well, basically magic is real. Demons are from another dimension. And our job is to gather up all the cursed, enchanted or otherwise magical items that got left on Earth hundreds, hundreds of years ago. Pretty standard TV plot, actually. Right. But why hasn't anyone heard about this before? I mean, if there is magic and demons running around everywhere... Most of the magic... Oh, for heaven's sake, I'm gonna kick you in the nuts. That's worse than baseball bat. In the head. Most of magic was rounded up and destroyed back in... The, because he slurped, okay? I know if you could hear it, but whatever. Most of magic was rounded up and destroyed back in ancient times. Demons heard human myths and legends and thought they were so cool they had to see them in action. Yeah... Lost the whole continent because of that. Oh man. Makes you wish we could lose like... Russia for example that way. Would be nice. Atlantis, right? Right. We wish it was Russia. Anyway, after that and some other incidents, Meridiana made the Human Preservation Association to round up all dark fucks and destroy them. And if you think I'm joking, no I'm not. But she's not going to destroy Gwen, right? Don't worry, she's in good hands. The boss loves awakened homunculi as much as she loves humans. Huh? A lot of magic items come with a homunculus or a magical AI built into it. Only the demons cheated and used actual human brainwaves and sometimes memories to make them so they can glitch and take on a life of their own. 
Most time, when this happens, the homunculus is only interested in its own survival or fulfilling its purpose. But once in a blue moon, you get something really special. Like your new girlfriend. She, she's not my, I mean, I mean, we only dated a little bit and... And... I don't know, this whole week I was has been a blur. I thought she was some powerful ev executive or something. Is that she's an amnesia ghost with a bad case of gay panic? <laughs> what a way to describe her. But it didn't seem to bother you before. I mean, I didn't say it did, but like she's a magical homogus that can create pocket dimensions. I'm a receptionist that can barely hold down an apartment. How is that supposed to work? Hmm. Well, it's true, being in a relationship with homunculus has some hurdles, unique hurdles. But everyone I've ever met with a supernatural lover says they're the most caring and devoted partners anyone could ever ask for. There are others? Oh yeah, there's a nice couple dating uh, a jack-o'-lantern demon, a woman with a shapeshifter that only thinks about murder. Oh, even a lesbian with sentient dating sim. What? I think you've got along with with her actually. Yeah. Quite the crowd, huh? They even have a local support group. Meets every other weekend in a bookstore over in Cravenport. Nice folks. And are you part of the group? I swim by every once in a while, but Maridiana and I aren't really like that. Would you like you to be like that? She's a succubus, and I'm a race. I think I'm more of a professional curiosity to her than anything else. Oh, a succubus, you say? Uh -huh -huh. Nice. Come on, man. Don't hold back. Fight! Oh, that darling didn't sound very professional to me. Wait, you said darling? I... Where, where did you say darling? What darling? Where did she ta take that from? I... Ah, oh, whatever. Demons are weird. But she respects my boundaries. I answer her questions and she gives me a good job. Hmm... You're not really an FBI agent, are you? Oh my god, I'm gonna freaking destroy this guy. Where's my baseball bat? He slurped again. No, I used to be an internet code monkey for some mega corporation that turned out to be an evil cabal. They captured Mariana, tried to sacrifice me to her, and now I work as a field agent for the HPA. I feel like you just skipped over a lot in that story. Mariana was telling the story, so you should ask her about it. Anyway, the HPA doesn't have any official status in human world, so she pulled some strings to get me affiliated with nearly every major organization on the planet. Nice. How is your income? Could I work for you as well? I've got everything from an Interpol ID to the Street Snacks Driver account. Yeah? Do you get paid for all those positions? Dude. So you do to travel the globe saving people from things that go bump in the night? Sometimes. Mostly just stick around the free cities area. There has been a lot of magical hot messes happening around here for the last few years. Way more than there should be. Sounds interesting. Huh? Do you get healthcare? With no deductible or copay. You're joking. Nope. Even get free dental and guaranteed vacation days. No! Absolutely not! I refuse! <sighs> I'm afraid this isn't something you can argue. I reject it. What's going on, Gwen? Are you okay? But Shadow Woman is suffering from offensive delusions. I'm sorry you feel that way, but I'm afraid the facts are facts. That's someone would explain to us mortals what's going on. Gwen took me to her home and I had to look at the programming of her cares. Programming? Turns out our reality works kind of like a computer simulation. And magic is just hacking and modding it. That's a terrifying concept. Right. Anyway, my suspicion was correct. 
all the half hazard coping of the original curse led to some pretty extensive glitches and mutations for your Gwen. I already knew I was a freak, even by my own standards. Ha! Huh. Mutation does have a bit of a negative commotion, connotation. Miracle might be more apt. That deterioration is what allowed Gwen to break through the emotional restrictions of the curse. With the help of a certain external catalyst. You have such a romantic way with words, boss. Well, if any of you spoke decent language like French. Oh, the most disgusting language in the world! What are you talking about? I could put it much better. Here we go. So what's the problem? It sounds like this is good, a good thing. Ahem. Well, it is. In fact, it explains why the curse has been so mild compared to its more lethal predecessors. What do you mean more lethal? I've killed half a dozen people! And not the necessary deception of pa our part, I'm afraid. Your victims are being cared for in a local hospital by HPA agents. <laughs> Let's go! What? Gwen hasn't killed, killed anyone, but she has put several people in deep comas. Our doctors are confident we'll be able to bring them around again, but we decided to preserve them in a stable condition until we were confident there was no further threat. Basically, we were afraid to try to finish the job if you knew they were alive. So, I'm a failure even as a curse! Only the best possible way, the curse is fueled by hatred, which is why it kept you from experiencing anything else. It used you as both a weapon and a battery. But when Annette broke the feedback loop it had created with you, it only weakened its hold over you. But the presence of positive emotions in your mind reduced the amount of negative emotions you could absorb. Hey. The happier Gwen is, the less life she can suck out of people. Magic is weird like that. But I nearly killed Annette in the park. So you keep insisting. How exactly do you know you are killing her? She got weak, her legs gave out and I started feeling jittery, full of energy just like after I devoured the soul. Hmm, I think it is unla uh, not unlikely the curse has some kind of positive reinforcement for completing its function for you. Not unlike how humans can experience a rush of endorphins from a Pavlovian stimulus when exposed to an established sexual fetish. What? You got... You got turned on and thought it was something else. Ah. I, well, I got, she got weak! Well, I mean, you're a, a really good kisser, so... Oh! But there's still a good thing, right? Why are you so mad? She's reluctant to accept from how this particular strain of the curse has been transmitted through the building. It's one mystery I fear we'll never solve! One we... Uh, one we must solve Gwen. I'll be able to save Annette, but if we don't find the patient zero of this curse and the tape you were derived from before tomorrow evening, I may not be able to save you. Then we have to find them. I can pull up the call lock and see who, first who the first person Gwen spoke to was. Oh no, dude! I actually threw I actually threw away the notes. I hope I don't need them. <clears throat> That's the first victim, not patient zero. The curse spreads when a victim creates a copy of the curse and spreads it to other people. I bet you it's the guy that was talking about the movies to to Gwen. I bet it's him. That victim is then given a prize, so long as they keep spreading the curse and becomes the patient zero for the new copy. So say, I can't remember anything about that or else I would have Annette do it the first night. There's no way I would sacrifice innocent people to save myself, Gwen. I would. <laughs> Unless she's... Uh... Unless she... She would be nice. No, I mean, I wouldn't if it was someone important to me. Otherwise, whatever. You could have shown it to your boss! Yeah. Tempting us that would have been. I doubt you could have even tried since you would need the tape. Or some other f faxy mile of the curse. Wait. Are you seeing how the curse is transmitted and mutated too? Not exactly. The curse doesn't spread through the video. It's hosted there, but it spreads through emotional impact. I'm telling you, it's the guy that's talking with, constantly talking about the movies. Or whatever. Maybe because he's talking about something else. To us, he was talking about movies back then. It takes root in human soul through feelings of dread, confusion, and unease. The video's imagery 
and sounds are designed to provoke these emotions, but there are other ways. There was a previous case where the curse was spread through a written short story, and another where it was made into a VR experience. I don't have a VR equipment, so I'm safe. Somebody was cursed a in a VR game? The uh, curse pushes an unconscious desire to duplicate and spread the curse in some people. I mean, to be fair, with the VR equipment, it makes sense for a movie, for example, I guess. The exact rules that govern this behavior are unclear, but seems to be some of the curse things would be more useful as a silent carrier than as sustenance. So the curse is like a virus. Dude, I already solved who this. I know. Hmm, an accurate analogy actually. But we have no idea who patient zero is and way to, uh, no way to find them. On the contrary, Iggy and I have been doing a great deal of reconnaissance and research, and I believe I know exactly who it is. Hold on. I think I might know too. You do? You do! I was going through all the people getting called for yesterday and I noticed something strange. Hold on, hold on, let me pull it up. Here it is. See this char cheat seating chart? All the victims were people in this area. All these desks are empty now, except for the one person in the middle. That's our patient zero. Holy shit! We were... We've been overthinking it. To be fair, we're approaching this like we're looking for a serial killer and not a contagion. Although Miss Turnbuckle's approach does verify our own conclusions. Yeah. I see why you were so upset when... I refuse to accept this! I may be a parasite, but I have to dignity to refuse to believe this, my host! <sighs> you have my sympathy, Gwen, but I'm afraid you're going to have to swallow this bitter beds and we need to secure the tape. I'll take one. It will take a while to search warrants, especially if you don't know exactly what we're looking for. It could be anything from an old video tape to a flash, dri flash drive. We need to bring him in for questioning before he can come into work. And that is scheduled to die tomorrow. So the curse will be desperately pushing him to find another victim. Okay, I'll get right on that. Thank you, Miss Turnbuckle. Let's go. You want me to go home? Now! It's been a long night. The HPA can handle from here. You should get some rest. I've got someone to argue. I must admit I'm so also exhausted. Having this woman poke around through my curse was... stressful. Are you okay? Yeah, just a bit tired. I'm sure too. Get some rest, Gwen. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, and we already the other. Juju! You remember you took her kids now, right? Okay. You make this uncomfortable. Good night! Now who's being adorable? <laughs> uh, who'd have thought the murderous rave could be so bashful? October 24th, 10.30 a.m. Dude, I'm telling you it's this guy. And so, due to the inhumane working conditions outlined both the malicious mistreatment of its employees and that there is no legal crime to provide a two-weeks notice, I have quit my position as a receptionist effective immediately. Let's go! Hello, Annette. Good afternoon, Agent 4. Did you get the warrant? Signed, served, searched. We found the tape and we've got the man in question in solitary confinement. Your paranormal paramour is still in the eye of all, so the boss wants to run a little experiment to prove it once and for all. She wants you there to provide moral support, and so we can take care of your problem at the same time. Sounds fun, just give me a minute to finish up my resignation and clock out. Oh, you're quitting. Nice. Well, I already spent most of last week job hunting, and this whole... And you already found something? Damn. And this whole ordeal has made it pretty clear that this job just isn't worth it. I mean, did you know that all the victims were fired for delinquency when they were in comas so the company wouldn't have to pay for their medical insurance? And this isn't the first time they've done that either, or even the worst thing they've done. I spent all morning really digging into this company's dirt and I've got a whole folder ready for the Better Business Bureau on a flash drive in my purse. Hell yeah, we can swing by way over and drop it off. Actually, I think we might have our contact in there. We should be able to get it expedited and maybe start a few lawsuits. Perfect. Alright, let's go. 12.30pm. 
Then the producer put in a lot of scary imagery with a bunch of insects and body parts, but I think that it pales in comparison to the 1971 Willy Wong on the Chocolate Factory with Gene Wilder tunnel scene, which they actually want to pay homage to by repeatedly showing a tunnel, but they go too far with the effect by adding an eclipse in this burning tree effigy that is reminiscent of our lost childhood being destroyed by modern Hollywood. The latter in chair movie was also very overdone, and almost the entire video is in heavily muted colors instead of... By the way, I was not clicking anything. Did I, I turn the voice? Yeah, I did. So it must be enveloped in one of those. Anyway, so we're just waiting for the curse to kick in. It won't! Gwen, dear, he's literally describing your video right now. You've seen it? Oh yeah, many times. I've been working this case since Hong Kong. We destroyed dozens of tapes and other analogs. Haven't seen one for quite a while, so we're still looking into how our friend here got this one. But he didn't! Because he's not my host! Babe, I know you're still new to emotions, but the denial look isn't good on you. Babe! What? You call me Juju all the time? Do you not want me to call you that? I do! It was a surprising in a good way! Now you know how I feel! This make. They, they, this may... This probably may... This may take a while. Any last minute loose ends you want to clear up? <clears throat> Everything. <clears throat> About Gwen's number. Actually, I had a question for you, Gwen. Ask me anything. You said you couldn't get, call the cell phones before. Something about the phone lines. Yeah, but I still don't understand how it works. Well, how are you going to give me your number then? Team's time come up a few days after you offered to give me your number, so I stole his cell phone and I was going to use that. But then I tried calling it and I found out I could call cell phones. So then why did you keep calling me at the front desk? Employees weren't allowed to have their cells on them during work hours, but Schwips would have cornered them while they were on a break. It doesn't make sense to me either. Actually, I can explain that. Magic doesn't break rules, it bends them. As Iggy explained it, it's much like modding or hacking a video game while you're inside it. You have to be very careful or the whole thing can crash on you. You mean all of the reality would just end everything? If the error went untreated or without quarantine long enough, yeah. Hanet, are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Just kind of flashbacked to, to 2020 again. Deep breaths, dear. <gasps> But as you can see, working within the rules of your reality is much safer and trying to rewrite them. So Gwen's curse works on similar principles and restrictions of a phone line. It requires a direct electronic connection. It's incompatible with wireless signals. Let's have the epidemic of the original tape and it actually a victim uploaded the video to YouTube. But that would have infected hundreds, wouldn't it? Thousands! If the algorithm would allow that. Ah. But he did so through a wireless router. The video was uploaded, but the curse wasn't. He's still talking. What the hell? So thousands of people watched the video that kills you, but none of them died? Correct. The video was exposed as a hoax. And if any of them did see a curse tainted copy, they were already sure it was nature, so the video couldn't instill the negative emotions it needed to infect them. So they were basically inoculated against the video? He did. The true irony was that it was an anti-vaxxer that uploaded the video. <laughs> of course. That's not surprising. I mean, those guys are dumb as hell. Or perhaps that's a poetic justice. I never was clear on the difference. If they died from the curse, that it, then it was karma. Well, that's a fun story. But my point is, you are going to give me your number now, right, Gwen? Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course. After finish up. Here, I doubt you'll need a phone number. Huh? You will see. What will I see? Huh? Uh, about patients. About Gwen's eye. Um, Miss Derulek. Oh, just call me Meridiana, dear. Meridiana. Is there anything you can call, do about Gwen's eye? Okay? What? What do you mean? It's ugly! 
No, no, I didn't mean like that. It just... It's like an open wound, isn't it? It looks like it hurts. I don't feel in pain. It just kind of tingles a little bit of sometimes. What are you talking about? My... Total, totally... <laughs> hiding the text box to have a look at her eye. Like... <laughs> how does that make any sense? I don't know, is it about the hidden behind the hair eye? Because, I mean, I don't see anything with the one we can see. Uh, I've looked her over, and as far as I can tell, Gwen is in the peak of health. Her scratches are more like birthmarks than scars. Unusual and unique, but nothing to worry about. Oh, oh, that's what you meant. Okay. He's still talking. Holy crap, what a goddamn chatterbox. Uh, I'm like, wait, what's wrong with her eye? I, I f and what you meant is the, like, uh, the f TV flickering thing, okay. Actually, I can see even better out of the sunny guy. I can even sort of see through things with it. A modified electromagnetic sense. I'm not surprised. It's how most of my kind see the world too. It lacks the ability to see color and so on, but it makes up for it in precision and detail. What the heck? <sighs> Alright, you know what? That's freaking cool. <laughs> I mean, maybe not for her, who does have that f condition, sort of, but... That's freaking cool. When I think about it, at least. Can you imagine, like... On left eye, for example, you see in color. On right eye, you see in black and white. Damn! That would be nuts. <laughs> Hang on, what do you mean see through things? What kind of things? Ah! Gwen? It's not like x-ray vision or anything. Actually, it's exactly like that. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you could even think, even think out later by showing her the rest of your birthmarks. That sounds like an excellent idea. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean her black and white eye is even cooler now. <laughs> About the patient zero. So what do you think of Kyle's sweeps? He seems very monotonous. You mean inhumane? You mean inhumane? He's been talking for over an hour and I don't think I've seen him stop to take a breath that entire time! Indeed, his vocal constitution seems to border on the superhuman. Perhaps it's an effect of the curse? <clears throat> Dude, meanwhile I'm here losing voice right now. No, he was like this years ago. He's not always around the office for being that guy. That guy? The guy who spends his entire lunch break talking at you about whatever me mind numbing things spark his interest lately. And that's if you're lucky, more often than not, he ends up talking about some new TV show or movie that just came out and spoils literally everything about it as he rambles on about how he didn't like it. He even read the book version and spoil you on it before the show is even out. So his very presence instills a feeling of dread, confusion and needs in any hapless office worker he manages to corner. Terrifying yet completely inconspicuous. The girls couldn't ask for a better host. And yet it seems your Iggy is unaffected. Uh, Schwips was talking at me for an, almost an hour before he called, remember? Give it time for dread to truly sink in. Then please ask something else so I can try to drown him out. <coughs> And last minus loose ends. One last thing. There's one last thing that doesn't make any sense. Agent 4 said that the HPA was in charge of rounding up all the magical items that had been left on Earth during ancient times. Yeah. Sadly, my people saw humans as entertainment instead of living beings. The damage they caused was unconsciousable and unforgivable. Since then, the creation gifting of magical items to humans has been forbidden, and all travel to your world is strictly regulated. But that's what that does make any sense! How could there be a cursed VHS tape from ancient times? Ah, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? 
It's possible that the curse began in some other form and became a tape. As I said, it has jumped media before. Hmm. But if Gwen is this scratched after just four copies, how could she survive thousands of years in any form? No. Put it simply, she couldn't, which only leaves one terrifying option. Someone is making more magical items and not gifts, but curses! I've been reluctant and considered the possibility that there may be a traitor in the HBA, especially one of my own race. But only a demon can create magic, and I fear your curse is not the only impossible gift I have encountered. But that's my problem to deal with. You two only need to worry about who's going to be on top tonight. Ah! Oh, it's a bit difficult to think about anything but that with the bubbling. <laughs> gotcha! Honestly, how much longer do we have to listen to this guy? Until the curse kicks in. I love it, religion, but this is a waste of... When? Uh? When not wrong? Finally, give her a clear path to the phone, dear. But when the fly effect was interesting, you didn't quite give the same level of interactive as something like Funk's 3D, which is the only fun to make a use of smell o vision, which wasn't actually visual amended. Hello? Hello, yes. Seven days! Oh, thank heaven. <sighs> Alright, Mr. Sweeps, I think that will do. We'll have some escort. Someone escort you back to the home just for minutes. Very sorry for the misunderstanding. Goodbye. Oh, but reminds me about the phone call interactivity where after I watch the video and then the phone would run and Impossible. He's he's still talking. Not for much longer. Ah, sweet release. So is that enough proof for, enough for you, huh? Or do I need to turn the intercom back on? Don't! I'll not be responsible for my action if you do! <laughs> I hate everything about my existence! Being trapped in a room with dead men should constitute cruel and unusual punishment. Should have taken earplugs with you. Out a full table of guarding bread and make up for the brain. Cells I just lost. I'll make sure you get it, darling. In the meantime... Oh, the darling going from her. Okay. In the meantime... <laughs> I just realized now, thanks to that line. In the meantime, we need to decide what to do with you two. You're going to free us from the curse, right? Wasn't that the whole point of this, huh? Wait, was this all just a trap? Relax. No. No one's going to hurt either of you. We just need to decide where Gwen is going to go. I can't break a curse without destroying Gwen, but now that I have the tape and its original magical DNA to use as a blueprint, I can change the curse without any risk to her. Meaning, I can remove the ingrates need to kill and optimize how she manifests and sustains herself, but she's still, she'll still need a host. You mean I'm going to be stuck chained to that bubbling thing in there forever? Please. I wouldn't subject my worst enemy to such a fate. No, I can move the modified curse to a more desirable host. If she consents to it. Oh no, please, I'm begging you, please, if you have an animal of four mercy in your heart, please. Gwen, relax, I'm not going to abandon you. Just so you know, you have choice. It doesn't have to be you. I could be in her to some other willing host, at least temporarily. But you wouldn't be able to see each other as easily, and you would both be much safer together. What will cost in a curse mean for me exactly? Your life force will be sustaining her, it won't be cutting into your life expectancy or anything, but you will feel some slight fatigue at first while you get used to it. Proper diet and exercise should help alleviate my symptom the symptoms, otherwise you should even be able to safely interact with each other just as another couple would. With a few exclusive benefits as well thanks to your spiritual connection. Thus, are you seriously saying <coughs> soul connection is a thing? Is it? Good. Dump me on board. Who am I hosting tonight? <laughs> that would be interesting. Uh... As a matter of fact, my late husband and I wrote a book on the subject. Husband! She means Pope Sylvester II. Who? 
I always hated that name. He was born a Gerbet of Orillac. I married Gerbet of Orillac, and I don't care how many times the Vatican re engraves that tombstone. He died Gerbet of Orillac. No idea who that is. He married a pope. I married a man, and I made him a pope. Why? My point is, the Vatican still has our original manuscript in its vaults, but I am sure I could get you to a translated copy easily enough. <laughs> um, so would this be a permanent thing then? You mean the scarce binding? No, I'll be able to split you two safely if you decide to do R and write for each other. But as succubus, I am an excellent judge of compatibility and can say with authority that I don't see that being an issue. <clears throat> there is more to a relationship than just <clears throat> intimate inter relations. As you and I prove every day, Iggy darling. Rest in peace, Iggy. <laughs> well, what will it be? <laughs> Think you'll be happy with me forever? Wah! But she said just it was reversible. Yeah, but you were willing to give your life for me. Only fair that I give you all of mine. Cheeky girl! I think that's a yes. Brava! Iggy darling, do you mind getting the paper while I take care of this spell? Sure thing. Paperwork, huh? Wait, are we like getting married? Huh? No, 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 no. That's much later. No, no. The paperwork is for your new position in the HPA. My new... You gave me a job! Well, you're bound body and soul to a previously unknown type of supernatural being. We're going to have to keep an eye on you. Plus, we looked over your profile during the investigation. Quite a new skill set you have. Truth be told, some of our agents don't give the most healthy habits. We could use an official health and fitness instructor. Fitness instructor? Me? Of course, the position is paid roughly five times your current salary. Let's go! We have full coverage, medical, dental, eye appointments, etc. And you receive monthly housing and food stipends. <gasps> Let's freaking go! Oh, and you'll have an allocated budget for buying the new gym equipment. We don't have much right now, apart from an outdoor truck that goes around the building and through a nearby park. Is that all acceptable for you? Where do I sign? Miss Turnbuckle? I think you broke her. Can I work for HPA? I want to work for HPA. That gives like kind of familiar vibes that music now in the credits. I mean, yes, there is voiceover in case you just dropped now. Uh, I decided to turn it off. Or more like mute it completely. Because the reason for that being, uh, it was like not full voiceover of the lines. And I know it kind of distracted me. That's all there was to it. Probably if I was not recording, I would keep it on. Uh -huh. But with recording, I don't know, it didn't work for me somehow. Yeah, that was a fun game, not gonna lie. That was a really fun game. Uh, I really want to work for HPA. <laughs> So if this game cursed me for some reason, I bet they also made a notice that something like that happened to me. I love the name of the third person in programming and animation, by the way. Uh, <laughs> perfect. Uh, please contact me. <laughs> HPA, I'm on board whatever position you want to put me on. You seem like the company, sort of, that not only deals with interesting stuff, but... Ghost wife is called... Uh, answer! <laughs> Damn it. 
I bet it was her. How may I direct your cares? Dude, what a banger. I loved it. Good job on that. Uh... And so, to be fair, a uh, job on unknown curse, right? This is a known curse around the roll. Uh, around the roll, around the world. How may I direct your curse? Let's see if uh, the death over here released anything else in the past. Ooh. There is five games in the past. For from the thumbnails, thumbnails, I see myself playing one of them at the moment at least. Why does the middle click not work? What the hell? Oh, now it does. That's weird. Now it doesn't again. Weird. Uh, anywho, link to the game in the description as per usual. How may I direct your cares? Uh, I think there have been some choices that you could have done differently. I think, maybe. 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 Uh, so you can do that a little differently. I do not know if there is any other endings. I don't know, maybe. With that being said, for uh, how may I? You know what? This book to bear, I think, is bringing really a lot of bangers. But then again, I think this book to bear, I'm also uh, sort of the most observant when it comes to each that EO. Uh, so who knows? Maybe there will be something interesting still in the store for us for the future episodes. I won't be surprised if we basically also drive the spook to bear into next month or two to be honest. <laughs> Funny enough. Anywho, let's end it right here right now because I'm starting mumbling. Uh, as per usual because they're liking and subscribing that's always appreciated. I uh, would love you to ha would love to have you around of course and I wish you all a wonderful day and well hopefully spook to bear treats you well. Bye-bye!